right, guys. How's it going this morning? It's uh, Friday morning, October 26th, I believe, 27th, October 27th. And when I came into work this morning, I had a interesting surprise because the um, the car that I let a customer take last night, uh, a 2002 Hyundai Tiburon GT, uh, the girl, she's 20 years old, I let her take it overnight because I had to get to class and she seemed really interested. And when I got to work this morning, the car was parked outside the dealership, all locked up, and the customer was nowhere to be found. And I thought, well, that's great. They uh, either uh, locked the keys in the car, uh, locked them into the gas gas door flap, which is locked and you have to unlock it from the inside, or they just still have the keys. It turned out that they still had the keys because about a half hour later, she showed up again. She literally ran in here. She said, we have a family emergency. I need one of your business cards and I got to go. I said, well, is the car okay? Was it a good car? She's like, yeah, it's fine. I really want it, but I have a family emergency. I said, okay. Um, everything okay? And she said, yeah, it's fine. And she said that as she was running out the door. Um, that was literally the length of our conversation this morning. And so here the car sits, and I still don't know what to do with the customer. If they don't want the car, I don't want to bother them. But if they do want the car, I do want to follow up with them and help them to get it and realize that we're the best place to buy from. But that's hard to do if I don't know where they're coming from. And so, and I don't want any, I don't want me to call them and have them be like, geez, those guys from Colonial are so annoying. They keep calling me about this car I test drove. I just want to do what the customer wants me to do. So I guess I'll just let them handle the situation. But anyway, um, I'm wearing my Hemi hat today because out on my dealership, I've got uh, three different Dodge Rams. Let me see if I can show them to you. I don't know if you can see out there what I've got, but this is my dealership. Um, and I have three Dodge Rams and one's a Hemi. And so my goal is to sell that Hemi today. I hope that I can do it. It's kind of a tall order. Not a lot of people have, you know, 20 grand to plunk down on a truck. But if they do, man, that's a fun truck to drive. So anyway, my brother, uh, Mitch, who's been spending the last few days with me here at the dealership since being back from his mission, he's done pretty well. We've had a few Spanish customers that he's been able to help. Um, we haven't been able to sell a car yet, but I just kind of told him the same thing. As I said, I said, hey, when you went on your Mormon mission, did you baptize people every day? Um, did you go two days without a baptism? Did you go three, four, a week without a baptism? He said, yeah, sometimes we would. I said, well, that's kind of the same thing with car sales, is you don't do a sale every single day. Sometimes you have to wait a week maybe even two weeks in some bad in instances. But it'll come around, and you always sell cars. People need vehicles, and as long as you're honest with them, treat them right, you don't cheat them, you don't use the tricks and the devious and the deceitful lies and things like that that you're taught. If you don't do any of that nonsense, and you help educate the customers so they can't let other dealers do that to them, they almost always will buy from you. But that's kind of the trick, is educating them what makes a good honest car dealer and then exemplifying that to them and then if you do that then they want to buy from you um, look at here in the video screen as I'm recording this you can see right above me this uh, hard to do it there that right there that's a seatbelt a seatbelt to a 1985 Saab 900S that I when I was 15 or 16 years old, fell asleep while driving on the interstate. And it veered off to the right-hand side of the road, and then I overcorrected. It came back across the road, skid two 360s on the interstate, going 80 miles per hour. Um, I was speeding a little bit. And then I went into the median in the center between the two interstate roads and flipped it end over end over end three times, three times end over end, 
so it actually ended up landing on its feet Ka-chung. and I didn't know what even went on my CD player skipped a few times it started playing right up again as soon as I stopped and I had no clue what happened well right as soon as that accident was over the first thing I thought I was out of it you know I was kind of in shock I didn't know exactly what happened I wasn't sure so I grabbed the uh, cellular phone that was in the passenger seat but at the time uh, it was actually a bag phone a car phone that you plug in the cigarette lighter a bag phone and I grabbed that off the floor I dialed home and this phone operated off the power of the car the battery and I guess that the battery had become disconnected or something during the wreck or, or that the phone itself had disconnected something and my phone call went a little something like this uh, hello mom uh, I think I just got in a in a wreck. I just rolled my car. Car, click, click. It was over. The phone call was over. My mom had no clue where I was. She knew I was alive and okay, kind of, but all she knew is I just flipped my car. Click. And so they called nine one one and they did all these things and they found out and they tried to call me back, but of course my phone didn't work and and I was only about five miles away from the house on the interstate. But they came, and by that time, the fire truck and the ambulance and people were there and all these things, and I actually walked away from the accident. I got out of the car on my own power, walked away, had to ride in the ambulance to the stinking hospital, but that's just for protocol, I guess. And then nothing was wrong. They did some x-rays. I was all good. The cop came to the hospital. He talked to me. He let me off way easy because he could see I was ambitious and trying to make something of my life. Plus, I was only 15, and so he cut me off pretty easy and gave me a ticket for uh, failure to stay in, in, the, in the proper lane, which I definitely failed to do that. I failed to stay in any lane. I failed to stay on the freaking road. But anyway, um, I got that ticket, and I paid it, and it's all good because the insurance paid out some good money on that car you see the morning that I went they, this happened in the morning that I flipped the car that morning I went to put the car in reverse and back out of the parking spot it was in it would not go in reverse the reverse had been stripped out busted out broken out I don't know but 10 11 years of driving that car had ruined the reverse on the transmission so I had to push it by hand in neutral back far enough and then I could drive it out. So the reverse was broken. And then I wrecked the car and we got top dollar out of the car. We got like three or four thousand dollars. And I used that to buy a uh, 1992 Eclipse, which I, in- I drove that for a while. I pimped it out a little bit, sold it for, I bought it for four grand, sold it for eight grand, bought another Eclipse that was way decked out, had all the features. We'll talk about that another time. I mean, it had custom paint, wheels, suspension, rims, everything. It was fast. And then I used that money and I bought a Dodge truck later. But it all started from flipping the Saab and that seat belt saved my life. I would not have walked away from that accident if I hadn't been for that seat belt. You know, the funny thing was, is when I was at the wreck, at the scene of the accident, after that wreck, everybody said, stay in the car, don't get out don't get out. They thought I was injured or hurt or that I would paralyze myself or something. Like, I'm fine. I'm okay. I'm just really shaken up. And I couldn't see the car, but it was all smashed on the outside. Maybe I'll be able to edit a picture of the car in here if I get good at this, but it, it was all busted up and uh, I just kept saying, hey, get in the trunk and get my Gatorades out of the thing. They're like, bud, we can't get in the trunk. I'm like, just get in the trunk and we can't get in it because it was all busted up and broken and there's no way. So long story short, they let me out of the hospital. I went, uh, we had the car dropped off on our property. I gutted all my stuff out of it. Insurance came and got it. And within a few days, I was on an airplane at the auction buying another vehicle. One of the benefits of living in a family that uh, deals with cars. So anyway, that's the story of me flipping my car and the story of my morning thus far. And so we'll talk to you uh, later as soon as I have something else to tell you. So take it easy, everybody, especially YouTubers. See ya.